Good morning. Hello. Uh, Karen, thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to speak with me this morning. Absolutely. Good morning. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to jump right in it, into it. I think the number one thing our readers at Parenting would love to know is, what is it like to be in space? <laughs> It is, it is absolutely incredible. I was there in 2008 on a shuttle flight. The unfortunate part of that, it was a very short mission, only 14 days. And I remember the first time we opened the payload bay door of the space shuttle and I was able to, to look out the, the back windows of the flight deck. It, it's, it's pretty much indescribable um, how beautiful it is. And the feeling of floating, um, you know, like a superhero is amazing. And I'm so excited to, to do it again. Wow. Uh, so your son is very young. Uh, how do you feel like um, becoming a mom has changed the way you now approach your job? That's a good question. I, I think I've always been somebody who has tried, uh, worked very, very hard to excel at absolutely everything I do, and I never accepted good enough. And since I've become a mother, I've realized there are some things I have, in order to balance um, my life with my family and my job, I need to accept good enough on some things. And that's okay. And I think I've learned to do that. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll work to the level. I still try to excel in, in most things I do. But like I said, there are a couple things I just, you have to say in order to be able to spend the time at home with my husband and my son, I need to accept good enough on a few things. Right. Um, so... Have you told Jack where you're going? Is he upset? What's the longest you've been away from him? And does he understand where you're going? The longest I've been away from him at this point is about five weeks. And he's three years old, so it's really hard to tell exactly what he understands. But we do tell him that Mommy's going to live on the space station. And when he sees a picture of the space station, he knows what it is. He knows what a rocket is. He knows that the space station travels around the Earth. He knows that in the space station there's no gravity and things float, um, you know, and that's the level of a three-year-old. It's really hard to tell if they understand it at a deeper level than that. But I'm looking forward to being there and sending down videos for him and showing him just simple things like when I'm eating and, and when, I'm, when I'm just playing around and um, just sharing that with him. What does a normal day look like for you right now as you're training um, for your upcoming mission and being a mom to your son? Well, I'm in Star City, Russia right now. I've been here for a couple weeks, and we're in the final preparations. Actually, we're pretty much done. We had final examinations, which are simulations in the Russian segment of the space station and in the Soyuz, which is the rocket that is taking us up to the space station. And it's pretty intense, um, but I did bring my son here with me. And um, I was able to at least spend time with him on the weekends and the evenings. And, but now we had our final ceremonial events at Red Square yesterday after we passed all of our exams. And I have some free time that I can spend with my husband and my son. So it's going to be very nice, and the weather's great here in Star City, so I'm looking forward to a few days of relaxation. That sounds lovely. Um... Do you feel it's difficult to manage training and being a mom? How do you do it? And do you have any tips for other working moms? I think I think this is almost like when you bring the brand new baby home. Nobody really gives you instructions. We we go through all this training and learning from every, everything from driving a car to the training we go to in college. And then when it comes to being a parent, you kind of learn by doing. And so I think that's what we're doing right now. One of the main things um, that I try to do now is is not make it a negative that I'm leaving. Um, never insinuate that there's anything negative about what's going on and keeping him a part of of the life of that that um, that we're leading and and just um, it's a normal thing. I see. Um, so, how did your own mother encourage you in STEM? In this question is in honor of Mother's Day. And do you have any advice for other parents who have daughters interested in, you know, STEM? My mother was awesome in that she let me do anything I wanted. I grew up in a very small town in Minnesota. Um, my mother was, was an, unable to go to college. And so to her, she just wanted me to be able to do anything I wanted. She taught me when I was really little um, to, to sew and to do a lot of the st stuff that I need to do at home. And she always encouraged me never, anytime I wanted to join a sport 
or do anything academic. It was always encouraged. Um, and so I think, I think for parents of other little girls, just let them dream and let them their imagination roll and do whatever it is that they want to do. Oh, do you have any plans for Mother's Day while you're in Russia and training? My plan for Mother Day is, Mother's Day is just to relax with my family. <laughs> do you feel like the distance from your loved ones and family feels more tangible when you're in space than when you're away somewhere on Earth? That's hard to say. I know when I'm on Earth, and in a way, I can have a video conference um, with my son and husband every single day. When I'm in space, I can call them. On We have an internet protocol phone that I can call them every day. However, video conferences will only be once a week, and I think that's going to be a little unusual. But I hope to videotape, like I said, some of the things that I'm doing and send it down as frequently as possible so that they can see what I'm doing on a daily basis. What about the other way around? Your son is probably still setting a lot of milestones. Do you have any agreements with your husband for him to capture some of Jack's first or big moments while you're in space? I think I think there will be a lot of pictures taken and a lot of video taken. Um, my son will actually be starting preschool in September, so I will miss his first day of school, which Aww. of course makes me sad. But uh, but there will be a lot of pictures, and uh, and when my husband's going to do a great job of of getting him out the door to his first day of school. Um, do you hope that he'll follow in your footsteps? Is he displaying an aptitude for science? He actually is displaying an aptitude for science. He loves he loves to understand things. He loves to to look things up. We'll go to um, Google and he'll say he wants to look up an animal and he'll tell me and we'll probably in a 15 minute period of time look up about 20 different animals. Um, he loves the planets. He loves to talk about the planets. He loves dinosaurs. He loves looking at on his cars and trucks. He'll he'll look down at the wheels and say, "We need to fix this," or "We need to." So I, I think he definitely has an aptitude, and I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up in some type of a technical field when he's an adult. Okay. Um, and aside from your son, obviously, and your family, what creature comforts are you going to miss most when you're away from Earth? Hmm. My bed, I think, is, is an important one. Um, although, although you know, I was only in space for two weeks on my shuttle flight, so I'm not sure I ever became very, very comfortable at sleeping in without gravity. But from what I've heard from other people, it, it becomes extremely comfortable. Um, so, so maybe in a couple months, that won't seem so important to me. Um, another thing is coffee in a cup. We drink our coffee in bags. <laughs> And my morning coffee, coffee in a cup, I think I, I will probably miss. <laughs> right. What is, do you think, the biggest misconception regular people have about astronauts? Oh, gosh. I think we are just normal people. You know, it's so hard when there's somebody that you see and you only see a small portion of them. And, and all of us have very, very normal lives with normal families, and um, we just happen to be in a job that is an extraordinary job, and, I, you know, we're so lucky to be able to do it, um, but we are just ordinary people. Um, and now, what do you think is your biggest struggle as a parent? Uh, you always wonder if you're doing the right things for your children, I think. And, you know, I have struggled with, is it, a, is it a good thing for me to leave my three-year-old for six months? And, you know, after going through it in my head for a long time, this is a dream I had since I was a young child myself. And I don't think I would be setting a very good example for my son if I gave up on my dream. So, so I think that's one of the biggest things, and it's going to be really hard to say goodbye to him next week. I see. Well, thank you so much, Karen. It was lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much. You too. Bye-bye.